Aaron Yeager's founding titan form and powers, explained. Aaron Yeager is the most complex character in the Attack on Titan franchise and his story forms the basis of the plot of Hajime Isayama's manga series. Aside from his importance to the plot, Aaron is also specific because, at one point, he was in possession of a total of three of the nine titans, the Attacking Titan, the Warhammer Titan, and the Founding Titan. Out of them, the Founding Titan is the most specific one, and here is everything you need to know about Aaron's Founding Titan form in this article. Aaron Yeager's Founding Titan is very specific, mostly due to the conditions through which it manifested itself. Namely, when the Founding Titan manifested itself, Aaron had already been decapitated at the time. The Founding Titan's spine then had to connect Aaron's head to his body, which is why the spine actually formed the basis of the Titan's body, thereby creating a monstrosity composed mostly out of bones. In the continuation of this article, we are going to give you additional information on Aaron Yeager's Founding Titan form. Aaron Yeager's Founding Titan form was not only different from the other incarnations of the Founding Titan, but also quite specific and eerie. In this article, we are going to provide you with all the necessary information for you need to know about this form. Aaron's Founding Titan Height We do know that Titans are, in most cases, enormous, in any case, they are much taller than regular humans. As for the Founding Titan, he is among the larger Titans, and his base height is an incredible 13 meters, i.e., 43 feet. Now, this is the basic form but as we could see, Aaron's Founding Titan was much taller but, unfortunately, we don't know the exact height of Aaron's Founding Titan as Isayama never officially revealed it. This is not strange, to be honest, as the height of Emer Fritz's Founding Titan form is likewise unknown. Why is Aaron's Founding Titan so big? The reason why Aaron's Founding Titan is too big is very specific and a bit bizarre. Namely, if we go back to the beginning when Emer Fritz became the Founding Titan, we'll see that the Founding Titan came to be when the Titan's spine attached itself to the body of Emer Fritz, thereby creating a larger version of Emer's body. The Titan looked like a monster, but it had a humanoid appearance, whereas Aaron's Founding Titan looks like a complete monster, as you can see for yourselves. In case you were wondering, there is a reason why Aaron's Founding Titan looks like a giant, monstrous spine. Namely, when the Founding Titan attached itself to Aaron, Aaron had already been decapitated. So, the only way for the Founding Titan to manifest itself was to connect the head back to Aaron's body, which could only be done via the spine. So, the Founding Titan's spine connected Aaron's head to Aaron's body, but due to there being a distance between the two, the spine started to grow uncontrollably, thereby turning Aaron into a monster. This explains why Aaron actually looks like a monster and why he is so large, the spine simply started growing out of control and instead of the body, it was the spine that formed the basis of Aaron's Founding Titan form. Why is Aaron's Founding Titan just bones? The answer to this question is actually a continuation of the previous one, as they are quite clearly connected one between the other. Namely, when Aaron's Founding Titan manifested itself, its spine actually formed the largest part of its body. Unlike most other Titans, though the body of the Possessor forms the basis of the Titan's body as well, due to the specific conditions of the Founding Titan's manifestation in Aaron's case was a bit more specific. In this case, it was the spine that formed the basis of the Titan's body, since the spine was used to connect Aaron's severed head to his body. This is why the spine grew large and since the spine is basically a collection of bones, this explains why Aaron's founding titan was actually composed out of bones, vertebrae and ribs. Why did Grisha give Aaron the founding titan? After hearing about the attack on the Shiganshina district, the Rice family gathered in the underground cave below the chapel, where the founding titan had been passed down for generations. In the cave, they were visited by Grisha Yeager, who had been commissioned by Aaron Kruger to take the Founding Titan 13 years ago. Grisha identified himself as an Eldian and a subject of Emer and asked Frida to use the Founding Titan to save the people from the walls, but his pleas went unanswered. Seeing no other choice but to fulfill his promise to Kruger, Grisha transformed into the attacking Titan and battled Frida's Founding Titan. Due to her inexperience, Frida was quickly overwhelmed and Grisha devoured her, stealing her power and killing Frida before turning his attention to the Rice family and killing the entire line except for Rod, who escaped, and Historia, who was left behind. Grisha then returned to Wall Rose and searched for his family. He found his son Aaron and adopted daughter Mikasa, but learned that his wife Carla had been killed. 
Grisha then entrusted Aaron Kruger's original mission to his son Aaron Yeager, bringing him into the woods alone and injecting him with the Titan Transformation Serum. Aaron will have no memory of the event for the next five years, and as a pure Titan, he consumed his father, inheriting both the Attack Titan and the Founding Titan. What is the Founding Titan's powers and abilities? Before we conclude this article, we are going to give you an overview of the main powers manifested by the Founding Titan, which make it the most powerful among the Titans. Titan Creation The Founding Titan can turn Eldians into Titans, and can even make them as massive as the Colossal Titan. King Carl Fritz used this ability to create many of the 50-meter Titans that make up the walls. Zeke Jaeger's Beast Titan can also transform Eldians into Titans by howling after injecting those he wishes to transform with his cerebrospinal fluid. Zeke's Beast Titan is said to have similar abilities to the Beast Titan, therefore, it can be assumed that the method for the Founding Titan is more or less identical. Titan Control By howling, the Founding Titan grants its wielders the ability to control the Titans at will and have them follow virtually any command. This was demonstrated by Aaron Yeager, who unwittingly commanded nearby Titans to devour the Dina Fritz's Titan and attack the Armored Titan. It was also used by King Carl to construct the walls, commanding many 50-meter Titans to harden their bodies and confine themselves within the resulting structures. Over a thousand years earlier, this same ability was used by Emer Fritz who used Titan power to perform great deeds for the ancient kingdom of Eldia, though his claims could never be sustained. There is no known limit to the powers of the Founding Titan, although its reach is so extensive that it forces the Titans to perform actions that threaten their own lives. Rod Rice stated that the Founding Titan even had the ability to wipe out all Titans, if used to its full potential. Memory Manipulation Those who possess the Founding Titan are able to erase or alter the memory of one or more Eldians. It was used by Queen Frida Rice to seal Astoria's memories of her visits and by King Carl to cause his subjects to forget the history of the world before the walls were erected, which made him and of his successors the few within the walls who know the truth about the outside world. However, non-Eldian bloodlines of the walls such as members of Clan Ackerman and noble families are known to be immune to this mind manipulation since they do not share a common bloodline with the Eldian race of the walls. Royal Bloodline Connection it has been said that only a member of the Rice family, and by extension the old Fritz family, can fully utilize the Founding Titan. However, it seems that, if the Founding Titan is held outside of the royal family, the power can still be used if the holder is in physical contact with a royal family member, this was seen when Aaron unleashed the power of the Founding Titan by punching the hand of Dinah Fritz's titanic form and, sometime later, when Rod Rice and Astoria Rice put their hands on Aaron's back, it caused brings back memories of Grisha Yeager. However, when attempting to see past memories while holding Astoria's hand, this method failed. Aaron has considered whether touching a royal blood titan will work a second time, though he hasn't talked about the idea publicly out of concern for Astoria's safety, despite the legacy of the world's memories and the ability to control the titans, no founding titan of royal blood has expressed a desire to resolve the threat of the titans and restore humanity's freedom after inheriting the power even if they had expressed a desire to do so before receiving it. This is because these founding titans inherited the first king's ideology along with his memories. Frida suffered from fits of madness and depression because of these memories and claimed that the Eldians were sinners who deserved their punishment. Can Aaron use the founding titan's powers? Aaron Yeager can, indeed, use the power of the founding titan, as was witnessed in the manga, this will be shown in the anime in the final batch of episodes. Aaron used the powers of the Founding Titan to release all of the Wall Titans while creating a body for himself that ended up being much larger than even that of the Colossus Titan, who was the biggest Titan before. After that, he once again used the Founding Titan's abilities to communicate telepathically with all of the subjects of Emer, telling them of his plans to destroy all of the world outside of Parody Island. Sometime later, Aaron again uses the Founding Titan's powers to communicate telepathically with all of his friends individually this time, within the paths, and tells them his true intentions, he wants to redirect the world's hatred from Parody Island onto himself and then have his friends kill him so that they can become heroes in the eyes of the surviving people. He also tells them that the power of the Titans would cease to exist following his death, which proved to be correct. How long do Titan shifters live? Do they age faster? The power of the Titans is an incredible power to have in the world of Attack on Titan because it allows the user to become a Titan that will and decimate armies with the incredible power of a Titan. 
However, the thing about being a Titan Shifter is that this isn't something that is not without consequences, as there is something called the Curse of Emer, which is related to the lifespan of the original Titan or the founding Titan. So, with that said, how long can a Titan Shifter live? A Titan Shifter only has 13 more years to live after acquiring the power of the Titans. As such, regardless of how many powers or Titans the Shifter has, they will only be able to live for 13 more years ever since acquiring their first power. This is because Emer only lived for 13 years after becoming the founding Titan. As powerful as the Titans are in the world of Attack on Titan, they are not too powerful to the point that they get to live for a long time. That is why not all of the Eldians that live on Marley want to be a Titan, as they know that they won't be able to live long lives after becoming one. So, with that said, let's discuss more about the lifespan of a Titan Shifter in Attack on Titan. Do Titan Shifters live forever? Throughout the world of Attack on Titan, the Titans were the most feared creatures that walked the land because of how large, powerful, and durable they were. For generations, the Eldians used the Titans to their advantage to conquer different nations and kingdoms throughout the entire world. However, it was the power of the Titans that the Eldians truly valued, as this allowed an Eldian to transform into a Titan at will and use its power to decimate entire armies. And even during the time when the Marlians had conquered the Eldians, they used the power of the Titans to their advantage as well. But while it was a great honor for an Eldian to have the power of the Titans because it allowed them to become powerful enough to become an important military asset for Marley, the thing is that these Titan Shifters do have limits in terms of how long they can live. While regular human beings get to live for up to 70 or 80 years, depending on how healthy they are, the Titan Shifters don't get to live for a very long time. In that regard, they don't even get to live forever, no matter how powerful their Titan powers are. As such, the power of the Titans comes at the cost of a person's lifespan because it shortens their remaining years. That is why not all of the Eldians want to be Titan Shifters, as there is a considerable risk that comes with having the power of the Titans. This is where it becomes clear that power comes at a price in the world of attack on Titan. How long do Titan Shifters have left? We have established that Titan Shifters don't live forever. In fact, they don't even get to live the normal lifespan of a human if they turn into Titan Shifters quite young. But how long do Titan Shifters have left? The story of the lifespan limit of a Titan Shifter goes back to Emer herself. She was the original Titan as she was the one who held the power of the founding Titan, which is the Titan from which all of the other Titans came. During the early period of the Eldian Empire, the King of Eldia relied on her powers to conquer different lands and kingdoms until the Empire grew larger and larger. However, 13 years after she acquired the power of the Founding Titan, Emer died taking an attack from an assassin that tried to kill King Fritz. After that, King Fritz forced his daughters to eat the remains of their mother so that they would acquire the power of the Titans and pass it on to their children as well. Since then, numerous Titan Shifters have inherited the power of the Nine Titans from Emer's daughters. All of them only had 13 years left to live after becoming Titan Shifters because Emer only had 13 years to live after she became the Founding Titan. And that's all because no other Titan Shifter should be able to surpass the Founding Titan. So, if a person became a Titan Shifter at the age of 1, then that means that they will only get to live up to the age of 14. Meanwhile, a Titan Shifter that gains the power of the Titans at the age of 50 will only get to live for up to 63. And this 13-year time limit is the reason why the Marlians train Eldian warrior candidates young enough so that they will acquire the power of the Titans during their prime years while they are still quite young, before the Titan Shifter's 13-year time limit passes, they should pass the power of the Titans to someone else, or else the power passes on to a newborn Eldian child. That is why the Marlians keep track of how many years a warrior has left to live out of course, we saw Falco wanting to become a Titan Shifter not because he wanted the power of the Titans but because he didn't want Gabby to become a Titan Shifter due to the lifespan limit, as he wanted her to live a long life. How long does Eren have to live? Eren Yeager, the primary protagonist of Attack on Titan, was actually turned into a Titan Shifter by his father at the age of 10. He didn't remember that due to the trauma that he experienced after he turned into a mindless titan and ate his father, who was the one who had the power of the attack titan and the founding titan at that time. It was only when Eren was already 15 years old that he manifested the power of the attack titan for the first time. A few months later, he learned of the 13-year time limit of a titan shifter and said that he only had 8 more years left on his clock because he turned into a titan at the age of 10. 
Meanwhile, there was a four-year time skip between season three and the final season. During the final season, Aaron was already 19 years old. That means that he only had four more years left in his lifespan before he would die. Can Titan Shifters live longer than 13 years? At this point, there hasn't been a Titan Shifter that has lived longer than the 13-year lifespan that comes with the Curse of Emer. Not even Aaron, who had the power of the Founding Titan, was able to find a way to get past this limit. But it was because no one could get past this limit, among other reasons, that Aaron wanted to erase the Titans from the planet. As such, he became the villain that allowed the entire world to unite during the final parts of Attack on Titan. When Mikasa finally killed Eren for good, she killed the founding Titan and erased it from existence. In that regard, the power of the Titans, as well as the curse of Emer, were all erased. So, when Eren succeeded in his plan of erasing the Titans from the world, he was also able to find a way for Armin and the other Titan shifters to live longer because the curse of Emer no longer existed due to the fact that the power of the Titans no longer existed as well. As such, they were no longer Titan shifters and were now allowed to live out the rest of their normal lifespans. Why did Eren start the rumbling in Attack on Titan? Can he stop it? Eren is undoubtedly the most iconic anime character in the Attack on Titan series. He is the series' main protagonist and has somehow become the main antagonist. He started as a hot-headed boy with anger issues who now hold power to eradicate the entire world if he wants to, but why did Eren Jaeger start the rumbling, and can he stop it? Eren started the rumbling to take revenge against the Marlian Empire that plotted against the Eldians of Paradise. He plans to eradicate the entire world. He has complete control over the Titans and can stop the rumbling anytime. The rest of the article will go over the events leading up to the rumbling, why Eren doesn't plan on stopping the rumbling, and why Zeke partnered up with Eren to initiate the euthanization plan. Eren and Zeke played a role in starting the rumbling, and this article will cover all the details.